Hello everyone, welcome to Joy Clicks. My name is Christian Buckley. Once again, for the first time in a minute, Jack Martin is joining me to talk about Pokemon. Hello, it has been so long. I it have not been. caught a Pokemon in what seems like years, but it's yeah. quite literally months. It's yeah, it's long. it's wild that my first Mon was this year. <laughs> I know, that's weird to think about. Yeah. Uh, but you've been out and about in the real world for a while, right? You could say that. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, in grad school now, so Very nice. chasing a master's. Nice. And uh, I didn't realize I'd have a lot of time for video games, but I've played probably more video games now than I have during my undergrad, so that's cool. Well, that's interesting to hear. Yeah. <laughs> As someone who is rapidly approaching the end of college. Um, so today... I figured we would sit down similar to the way we did at the start of My First Mon and kind of pick your brain about Sword and Shield, general Pokemon things, because if viewers are not familiar, your first Pokemon game was Pokemon Blue. Right. Similar to my, how mine was Pokemon Red, the difference being you played it this year. Yes, uh, I played it, what? 20 plus years after it was released. I think we, I did the math wrong on our first episode, I think, but I think it was 23 years. Wow. That's, uh, that's a year older than I am. Yeah, same. 96, right? It came out in 96, yeah, originally. Okay. Yeah, before we were both born. Yeah, so this franchise, it's almost a quarter of a century old. You're making the jump from, uh, ground zero to, again, 23 years later with this new one. And there's a lot to discuss, I think, about expectations, um, feelings you had post-mortem for the first game, how that's impacting your hype level for the new one. Right. And I don't know how much you followed it, but with Sword and Shield, there is a lot of, I won't say, I'll say negativity <laughs> surrounding it. <laughs> with video games? No. Yeah, right? Can you imagine? Oh. Um, so I guess starting off, you said you mentioned you had some some free time Big in time. your in your new lifestyle. Has any of that free time been devoted to any new Pokemon experiences? Uh, no, none at all. No, um, okay. Although I was cleaning out my basement today, and mm -hmm. uh, I should have brought it up, but I found a like decrepit Charizard mask, or I think it was Charmander mask, <laughs> um, from like. Like, literally 20 years ago, probably. Oh my god, that um, must must have been horrifying. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Uh, I didn't realize that I even had that thing. Mm-hmm. But. That, what is that for? I can't remember for the life of me any time I've ever seen the Charmander mask, though. I have no clue. Um, that's... I was a little terrified. That sounds like a creepypasta. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Yeah. It, oh it very god. well... I might actually write a creepypasta based off that. Might be haunted. It could very well be. But uh, aside from that, no new Pokemon experiences. So I guess diving in, how closely have you been following the marketing for this? Um, not very closely. Okay. Uh, the things that I can speak to, mm -hmm. like sort of, uh, the open world aspect of it. Sure. Where you can like, kind of leave and, um, from my understanding, like go collect Pokemon just in the wilds, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, the, what was it, Gigantamax? There's Dynamax and Gigantamax. Okay. Um, I'm familiar with that. I'm yes. curious if that's just a gimmick or not. Like, if that really makes a difference. Yeah. Um, it kind of is. You know, like, e almost every single Pokemon game I can think of since the original has had some sort of gimmick. Mm -hmm. More recently, it's been involving actual, like, physical things with your team. So it started, I think, with Mega Evolution, which was, like... A temporary fourth stage of evolution for some people they got like way better stats um, new appearance but Dynamax is kind of like just stronger moves but Gigantamaxing is similar to Mega where it gives you like a new look and also stronger moves but it is still limited right as far as my understanding goes because I haven't been like super in-depth with all this because I do like some surprise out of a new Pokemon game, but yeah, that is the gimmick for this one. That's fair to say. Yeah, definitely. Um, what do you think of some of the designs? Because 
you, we started with the originals, and a lot of those designs, why I think they hold up, are because they're very minimalist mm-hmm. with what they are. Like, a lot of the times when you ran into animals, or Pokemon, I guess, in the game, you're like, it's just an animal. So, have you seen many of the new Pokemon for this gen? Um, briefly. I think in some trailers I've seen, like, into the wild, like, in the wilds part of it, I've seen, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to think of, what's the water dragon? Gyarados? Yes, I've seen Gyarados, um, definitely Gyarados. I don't know if I've seen, I've seen the, uh, the new starters. Right, okay. I, I can't remember their names, but I've definitely seen those. Um, and it's interesting coming from Pokemon Blue, because they were, it was all sprite-based. Mm-hmm. So a lot of it was kind of left up to your imagination. Uh, yeah, colors too. Colors and specifically size. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Like, uh, there is no like size differential really. Um, yeah. But like if you see a Gyarados now, you realize, wow, it's a huge dragon. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see. You did mention the starters. Yeah. There is Grookey, the grass monkey, uh, Sobble, the water lizard, and Scorbunny, the fire rabbit. Are any one of these standing out to you at the moment? Feel water. free to pull uh, water again. Big time. Going for Squirtle. Nice. Or trying to capture that. I don't know if it'll be the same, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because when they when they originally revealed them, I was like, oh, Grookey, obviously. Monkey, grass, looks fun. But uh, it was just like a part of me that's like... I feel like his final form is going to be garbage, and it's just going to ruin the entire thing for me. Mm-hmm. I, I did see those leaks, and I think game day, it may come down to just the vibe I'm feeling if I go Scorbunny or Grookey. So, but it's interesting that water stuck out to you the most. Yeah, I think I just kind of want to continue that sort of, uh, that sort of like evolution, the track of evolution that I had with um, Squirtle. Mm-hmm. Uh, do it again, but... 20 years later <laughs> yes yeah, i mean it's it makes sense if that's like the advantages and disadvantages that you're used to mm-hmm. uh for most instances ever since i played red as a kid i normally go fire unless the design is like a standout for me with one of the others which there have been exceptions but yeah i think there's definitely instances where longtime fans will just usually stick to one of the cert- one of the three types right so it's interesting that you that was your reasoning though <laughs> yeah I've yeah se- i've seen a lot of people just like the like sobble because he's just the depressed one he is depressed i have noticed that um yeah so we'll see how that so. goes maybe he'll get less depressed as uh, the evolution goes on so yeah nice message about growth and positivity <laughs> yeah i hope so i hope he doesn't get more depressed that oh could you imagine that <laughs> not fun oh uh, That'd be something. A super, like, final form is just, like, sweatpants and tub ice cream. Oh, man. Like, uh, into into the Spider-Verse Peter B. Parker. Yeah, exactly. Um, So I I guess moving on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which we were kind of already touching on a little bit. Have you been following the controversy much? It doesn't seem like you have. Not really. Okay. What I can boil it down to in the simplest way from my understanding of where the like justified arguments are coming from (laughs) it's that they cut significantly the number of pokemon that you can catch in the game and in turn import into the game because remember we had we talked about um how up until this point if you caught a pokemon on the cartridge of blue from 96 you have a way to transfer it all the way up to sun and moon right now that's not possible they're offering the ability to transfer it into an app that's like hey when they get around to being included in a future game you can transfer them in from there so there's still a way to like have your pokemon you have an attachment to like continue with you but as of right now I think they pretty much cut it in half as far as the available Pokemon in the game. And their reasoning was that it was to have better animations, but the animations seem to be recycled from previous games, so that's where a lot of the outrage comes from. 
But I, as someone who, again, played Gen 1 for the first time, do you think that you would ever want to bring your Blastoise into a new adventure with you? My Blastoise back to uh, this new game? Yeah, like, or anyone from your team that you had an attachment to. Like, because do you think that you would rather just keep them there and then form new bonds with a new team and new adventure? Or, like, again, because you did just play your first one. Mm Mm-hmm. How strong is that attachment for you, do you think? Would you really want to bring them in, or...? Yeah, so I love my dude Blastoise, because uh, he wrecks shop like, anywhere I went. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would be tempted, but there's something to say about him being so overpowered. Um, and I don't know, you can tell me this, um, if you start, like, a new Pokemon, let's say, like, Sun and Moon, and you bring all of your Pokemon that you've accrued throughout the years... Mm-hmm. When you start the game with those Pokemon, is the game already leveled against those Pokemon? So they usually hold you off until, like, maybe halfway or three-quarters of the way through the game okay. before you can transfer them in. All right. So, um, yeah, you couldn't get hit the ground running with them. So at least, like, my only reasoning with not transferring much outside of the Game Boy to DS games is, like, by the point I can bring them in, I'm already attached to a new team. Mm-hmm. That's how, that's where I stand on it. But like the idea of continuing that journey, is that something that you think would appeal to you? Like, where do you fall with that? I think it's interesting because like you get to keep growing that bond that mm-hmm. you have with the Pokemon, um, and it seems a little sad that they are not at least letting you do that for right now. Yeah, I, I definitely sympathize with the people that are like, oh, my favorite's not included in this version of the game. Um, they're stuck on the 3DS now. Like, I don't know what to do. So I, I see where those people are coming from, and I, like, understand it. It's rough. But it's it hasn't impacted my excitement for the game. And as someone who's been, like, again, following the controversy and the marketing loosely, do you th- has any of that talk sway do you one way or the other about your interest level so um this isn't a game i'll get day one Mm -hmm. um just like i'm broke so uh and uh, my video game allocation has already gone to jedi fallen order Mm -hmm. um but i do have an interest in seeing how the game has progressed uh a series has progressed in 23 years uh because for me this is like the closest thing i can say to this is like it'd be like as as though I played Metal Gear Solid One, and then years later picked up MGS Five, The Phantom Pain, because those games are just obviously vastly different. Yeah, because um, if I you think about it, it's yeah. been uh, Game Boy Advance, DS, 3DS. It's been like four pieces of hardware of separation. Mm-hmm. Five if you count Game Boy Color between Red and. Uh, sword and shield right so it is a lot of like the technical possibilities are significantly more oh definitely (laughs) so yeah as far as that is concerned though like what's your biggest expectation for change like what do you think is the mechanic or aspect of this series that's changed the most from Game Boy to Switch, like where where's your head at with that? Because I'm sure there must be something you're expecting to be better or changed or um, something. I think for me, I think it'd be the game does a little bit better job of telling you where and what to do. Um, I think that's just the nature of games back then. Kind of just you were on your own, kind of had to figure it out. Mm-hmm. I was looking at some of the comments on uh, some of our older videos and. It was funny, like, in some of the later episodes, people are like, wow, he had Fly this whole time and never used it. <laughs> and uh, I still, like, never used it, like, throughout that whole uh, playthrough. Yeah. Because I didn't know I could, I had it or that I could do that. Exactly, um, yeah. So I think at least, like, giving you some sort of hints, like, this is what you have now, you can use it this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still giving you the, the opportunity to kind of learn for yourself. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair thing to look for, because... 
speaking from experience as time has gone on, uh, I feel like they do a significant amount of fleshing out uh, mechanics or uh, direction. Sun and Moon had uh, a waypoint on the bottom half of the DS. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't be lost (laughs) if that is going to continue with a... The design philosophy of, of Sun and Moon. I'm right. sorry, Sword and Shield. Um, so that's pretty much game design level, right? Like mm-hmm. what you're expecting to change. What about the story? Because the story in Red and Blue was pretty s- simple, straightforward. Uh, Pokemon gangsters being bad people, and you prove to them that like love wins. I guess I don't know. Yeah. So, what do you think, story-wise, like, do you think that, again, as the limitations have expanded, that the story is going to be more grand scheme? Like, what are you going into this expecting from a narrative perspective? I honestly expect something very similar and very dumb. Um, <laughs> no offense to the Pokemon fans out there. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's never really, I mean... I've only played one game, but it's never really struck me as a series that prides itself on a incredible story. Um, it seems like it's just a path to have fun battles between crazy animated creations. Monsters. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't. I mean, maybe you can correct me on that. If some some story of one of the games was pretty profound, but I expect like a sort of lighthearted adventure that's kind of made for kids. Yeah, and I think you could probably justify that with the anime as well. Because mm-hmm. as someone who has experience now with uh, the Indigo League, um, the story is like, sure, there are episodes that hit harder than others, but it's more about the relationship between the characters and their teams more than anything else. Right. Can I ask you something? Go for it. Um, so, <laughs> disclaimer, uh, don't want to offend any Pokemon fans, but... I've had this idea of a series, um, comparing it to something like, uh, this might sound crazy, but comparing it to something like Madden, okay. um, where Madden has come out since, what, early 2000s, um, and is pretty much the same game, uh, going forward with updated mechanics and rosters and all that. Mm-hmm. Is Pokemon similar? I think you could make an argument that it is Mm -hmm. Nintendo's Madden and I think you could have a lot of like weight behind that argument (laughs) yeah that because it seems like for the most part like the gameplay is fairly similar with obviously added improvements and like the whole meta behind the game capturing Pokemon building them up is like consistent throughout every uh, entry in the series Yeah, and going back to, like, the Dynamax thing, that's usually the thing that they use to differentiate as far as, like, again, the gimmick goes. Right. That's sort of my hesitation with, aside just from financially uh, picking up, like, day one, Mm -hmm. um, just because, like, I feel like I already had that experience so recently. Um, And, like, while I'm interested in comparing that with a new game in the series like 23 years later um i don't know if it'll how different it will be um like how crazy different it'll be obviously graphically and and narratively it will be different Mm -hmm. are you expecting the challenge of combat or the catching cycle do you think that's going to be significantly different than it was with the original um i anticipate the game being I don't know if it'll be significantly easier, but I think it will be at least much easier than the original Red and Blue. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think games at that time were just incredibly hard. Um, Yeah. Just because that's the way they were designed, and also they want, like, developers just wanted you to play the game longer Mm -hmm. at that time. So I think it will have a much easier sort of loop, gameplay loop. Um,. So yeah, I'm not anticipating like a difficult game with this. There's one thing I think you should hear about that may influence your excitement level and opinions on things. Okay. 
so again you have been following the marketing so i understand why you, this is something that's eluded you mm -hmm. there's a new type of uh multiplayer gameplay for sword and shield okay called max raid battles destiny Wh yeah kinda <laughs> where you can team up with three other people mm -hmm. in the wild area and you encounter a dynamaxed version of some pokemon say like uh a giant onyx okay so you go into this weird dimension it's pretty much a raid boss as far as what they've shown and you have to be working with multiple people to have some sort of a chance of fighting this thing. Mm -hmm. It seems like it's the highest like, difficult challenge in the game. They're really saying like, hey, if you have an issue with how recent Pokemon games have been difficulty wise, this is your answer. I wish, like that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a big multiplayer guy, mm -hmm. uh, personally. Like if it was similar to how God of War 2018 had the Valkyries, Mm -hmm. in which it was like crazy powerful enemies that you can go attack by yourself obviously because it's a single player game um, but if it, if it was like that in Pokemon and you could do it by yourself and get the same reward I think that'd be really cool personally so I guess that's kind of the recap of the basic info catching you up for Sword and Shield so you mentioned not being in day one but mm -hmm. you're still looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. I um I think that's an interesting place to be coming from. I think that based on what you've said, I am very interested to hear about what you have to say once you do get it around to playing it. Yeah. Um because I do think that your perspective on Pokemon is very interesting mm -hmm. just with your background and uh what we covered in my first mon. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and, like, this is a good Christmas game for me, I think. Uh, I don't think I would spend full price on it myself, like, at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and this might be <laughs> a greater conversation, and I know people will probably get mad at me. I don't really think Nintendo games, aside from, like, Breath of the Wild, are worth $60, uh, to begin with. Um, that's a take. Yeah, I know. Um... Well, you, you bring up a good point, because that's another thing people... Uh, this is the, I believe, the second Pokemon game to be sixty dollars. Mm. Traditionally, they've always been forty. I think uh, they should have probably stuck that way. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like the, I guess, just like the Nintendo brand or like bringing it up to console standard. I guess with that, those ex expectations being sixty, um, I think is it's definitely something that's influenced people one way or the other. Yeah. Um, considering the first $60 Pokemon game was a remake of a Game Boy game with Pokemon Go mechanics. Yikes. <laughs> and this looks to be a more HD version of Sun and Moon. So I, there's definitely a, a valid point of hesitation there. Yeah. And, and the fact that historically, at least from what I understand, um, Nintendo games almost kind of never drop in price. Pokemon's interesting because they kind of do. Okay, that's good then. I think we talked about this in my first mod. Like, I'm a new Nintendo fan, like, in general. Yeah. Um, so, I don't have the nostalgia that most people have with the company. Mm -hmm. So, some of the policies that they have, uh, pricing and online infrastructure and all that, um, I kind of take more... I'm kind of more skeptical and judgmental about that than other people are, I think. Mm -hmm. Um... I think that's, I mean, it could be the same with anyone who hasn't, like, who didn't start with a PlayStation and then got it now and be like, oh, these are the things that's wrong with PlayStation. That's just how I am with Nintendo. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I am I think I'm quicker to judge than most people are. Sure, yeah. And that's why I'm interested in hearing your opinions on these things, because I've been playing these since I was, like, three. <laughs> right, yeah. So I, I do have that attachment to it. There is nostalgia there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I don't necessarily want pokemon to be this grand breath of the wild style game so here like coming from someone who not necessarily has that need out of it but like will question why the number one 
highest grossing media franchise in the world is putting out a game like this for $60. Yeah. I think is valid and going in with the the ground level approach of having the experience of blue, I think is going to j- just add to why your opinions on it will be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. And like I said, this will be a good Christmas game if I get it for then. So um, I'll probably have my thoughts around then and uh, really have time to like delve into the game. Very nice. Well, uh, if people would like to hear from you about those things, uh, because no, we're making no promises about <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. following up my first one, but uh, if they do want to find your Twitter thoughts, where can they find you? Sure. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Fascinated Jack. Um, maybe at some point in the future, we can meet up and uh, have a in-person discussion. Who knows? Yeah, definitely. I, I think I'm seeing you soon at some point, so maybe look out for something. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, but yeah, and if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Chris N. Buckley. Uh, obviously, YouTube.com slash JoyClicks. There's probably going to be uh, a Chen Up episode about Sword and Shield the following Monday. Uh, and we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash joyclicks, that's new, you can go there, check out information, early access, supporting us, all that kind of things. Mike Connors will do an episode of Jedi Knights in his underwear. He has committed to that. (laughs) Uh, Jack, thanks for coming back, thanks for talking Pokemon, I missed talking Pokemon with you. Yeah, that was, uh, that was one of the highlights, uh, along with Excelsior, of, uh, my final semester in college, so, uh. It's uh, it's good to be back talking Pokemon for sure. Yeah, and I know there are at least twenty people that are happy to see you talking Pokemon again because I have seen uh, comments on the My First Mon videos since then talking about like uh, if you've done anything else with the series or what your interest level on Sword and Shield is. I saw yeah. someone specifically say, "Please get Jack to do a Sword and Shield follow up." Yeah, <laughs> I, um, I, I liked it, but. Again, yeah. no no promises at this point in time. Right. So. Um, maybe like some sort of retrospective at some point or another. Yeah. Um, I'd definitely be down for that. But yeah, I've, I've also I also went back and looked at the comments. Um, mm. And it was, like I said earlier, it's really funny to see people being like, dude, this dude has no clue what he's talking about <laughs> or what he's doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't either. Yeah. I was wrong about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's easy to be wrong with like such a huge series. Um, yeah. And like, there's so many different like... I don't know, there's a lot going on in Pokemon, but it was it was funny to see people's reaction. Um, and I wasn't offended at all, because, you know, these people are lifelong fans, and I'm some dumb 22-year-old who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> really understand Pokemon all that much. But, yeah, sure. Uh, it was cool. Awesome. Well, I- I'll let you sign off with the way you did on My First Mon. Right, and I, I remember exactly how to do that. Um, it was uh, something like catch you next time there you go okay cool all right see ya see ya okay